the devil a black eye. Would you clap your hands and stomp your feet with me like, you know, like church folk do? Because I heard my mother said, when we clap our hands, it gives him a headache. And I know he's giving us some headaches. Let's give him one back. And when we stomp our feet, we signify our victory. The army of the Lord is coming. I want it to sound scary. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. You better bless that wonderful name of Jesus.
the song stated, I don't know what you have come to do, but I come to clap my hands. I come to lift up the name of Jesus. If you've joined online worship this morning and you have come for no other reason but to give the name, to give the name of God a uh, glory and honor that is due to his name, why don't you just go ahead, clap your hands wherever you are in your living room, in your kitchen, in your car. Come on, just take a moment and give God glory and give God praise. If you're on social media, whether Facebook or YouTube, go ahead ahead and heart it out. That is your testimony that God has been good. God has been good. I don't know about you all, but truly I have a testimony this morning. Listen, welcome to Kingdom Builders Church International. You are right here in the sanctuary. And so we welcome you where our pastor is none other than Superintendent Dr. Daryl L. Grant. We believe in loving on the people of God. Our mission here is gather, grow, give, and go. We gather for worship. We grow in the word. We give our tithe and offering, and we go make disciples for Jesus Christ. Listen, I shared with you um, that I have a testimony and I know you have a testimony uh, this morning, but we are so blessed to have two individuals who are going to uh, join the Virtual Kingdom Table Talk and just share their testimony with us this morning. I promise you it's going to bless your life. I want to introduce to some and present to others, none other than our very dear sister and daughter, Sister Robin Turner. She hails from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, she's the owner, she's the owner of Jars by Robin Cakes Baby. Oh my goodness, if you haven't had any of her desserts, listen, you need to follow her and order you some today after service. All right, she is a cosmetologist and she's a certified last technician. We also have another kingdom daughter Carter. I mean, if you have a problem with her, there is a problem with you because Sister Tasha Joyner is one of the sweetest souls you would ever want to meet this side of heaven. Tasha is coming. She hails from St. Matthew, South Carolina. She is a registered respiratory therapist and has been for over 12 years now. She works in Gastonia, North Carolina at a local hospital there. And please, Kingdom Builders, family, guests, and friends, please welcome Robin Tasha. Turner, and please welcome Tasha Joyner. <laughs> Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us from the comfort of your homes this morning. I don't know about you all, but I miss actually hugging on you all and being in the sanctuary. Yeah, Anything yeah. you want to say to King <laughs> and family before we get started, Robin or Tasha? Just want to say hi and miss everyone. I miss everyone. Can't wait to fellowship with everyone again. Yes. yes. Love you guys. Miss you all. Can't wait to see you. Yes, absolutely. Listen, Robin and Tasha, you have joined today because Pastor and myself would like for you to share your testimony. Um, and, and I'll let you all share it. But before we do, I just want to share a few statistics with you all because we are still, unfortunately, in this season of COVID-19. And um, according to the CDC, 4,087,832 uh, uh, cases have been confirmed, confirmed. And uh, 1,261,624 have been reportedly recovered. Here is the one that here's what here's why uh, we want to talk this morning is because a lot of us um, we hear panic we hear death and yes there has been again according to CDC 142,143 uh, uh, confirmed deaths as it relates to COVID-19 but y'all God is still in the healing business yes. and these two individuals have been healed from COVID. So Robin, let's start with you with your testimony. Tell us when were you diagnosed and, and just what were the feelings when you first heard about it? <laughs> so I was diagnosed early in the process. I was diagnosed on March 18th. Um, I was previously sick. So I went and got tested. Uh, when they called me, I got my results back in less than 24 hours. Um, and so when I got that call, I had a feeling they were going to say it was positive because they called me back so soon. Uh, but I instantly got nervous. I got fearful. Um, 
and I reached out to my close family and my pastor and first lady. Um, I needed prayer. I needed some encouragement to get me through this because I was terrified. Yeah. And Robin, you were diagnosed before, or let's say you had had contracted the virus before the news and before it was declared a pandemic, right? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, ma'am. We remember that. Oh my goodness. Tasha, please share with you your diagnosis. When were you diagnosed? What were you, some of your feelings? It was on March the 16th when I was diagnosed and I was scared. I was worried because Quintarius could have possibly been infected and that terrified me to death and um, just worried, didn't know the unknown. I've seen the, the spectrum of seriously ill to mild symptoms. So mm -hmm. the unknown is what feared me and possibly exposing my son to the virus. Yeah, absolutely. And Tasha, you work in the medical medical field, just so everyone will understand what she's saying. She's seen both spectrums, um, the, the good and the bad. And so even in this moment, we want to celebrate first responders. Thank you, uh, Tasha, for just responding. You didn't have an option to work from home. So we appreciate you. Oh my goodness. Every day. <laughs> yes. So both of you all both said that you were scared, um, you were nervous. And we know that you're full of the Holy Ghost, but we are human. Yes, we are right. human. It right. says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. But before we get to that power, love, and sound mind, we have to conquer fear. Right. So, um, right. Robin, what role did your faith in God play in your recovery? Well, I, I'm grateful and thankful that, one, I know to pray and ask God for healing. Um, and I have that faith that he did heal me, that he was going to heal me. Um, I constantly just played songs in my, um, every day. I played different worship songs. I stayed in worship. I prayed every morning. Um, when some nights I couldn't sleep. And so I would just, I would pray to God. I would be in my bed because I couldn't sleep because I was coughing so much. And I would pray to God, just Lord, please take this away. Please heal my body. Um, thank you, Lord, for all you done for me. That song, I played that song over and over and over and over and over um, because I believed it. And so that really got me through with other with uh my pastor and first lady also reaching out to me that really got me through this process mm -hmm. yeah i remember robin because again you um were diagnosed before church church was shut down and i remember some of the members um uh, just like holding the phone up so like you could feel like you were in the sanctuary yes. thank you for that that was awesome that was awesome <laughs> Um, that put a smile on my face because mm -hmm. I hate missing church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I felt I was still a part. So that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, Tasha, we know you're a praying woman. You're yes, the prayer team here and you're just a woman of great faith. What, what role did faith play in your recovery? Well, it was God's reputation for always coming through for me. Mm -hmm. I was able to think back on times when I have been through so much and he has always been there for me. And that was always the forefront of my mind is I don't know what next day is going to hold, but I know that God is going to be right here with me. And my faith has just got to come up another level right now. And I will pray. I will worship. I will have someone call me and encourage me or send me a scripture. Or So it was, just knowing God's reputation of always being there for me that helped me to go day after day and be strengthened day after day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Listen, pastor is coming with a powerful word, but you're preaching already. <laughs> God's reputation. Oh my goodness. In the time of trouble and in the time mm. of storm, we have to be reminded of God's reputation. Tasha, wow. you making me excited this morning. I heard you? my pastor say that and it has stuck with me that God's reputation has always been good. He's always been faithful. No yeah. matter what the circumstance or the situation. So that really encouraged me to just hold firm. 
Oh my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I don't know where you are, but just why don't you just lift your hands wherever you are and just say, God, I thank you because thank your reputation is good with thank me. You. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So, Robin and Tasha, I happen to know that you all are dear hearts at Kingdom Builders. Um, our congregation loves you all. And so I just want you to share maybe a story or two. Um, how did your church respond during this time of crisis? Uh, Robin, how did your church respond? Um, it was overwhelming. Um, when I tell you they responded, um, my deck, my patio had bags galore. People was dropping stuff off. Um, whatever was needed. I wasn't even saying I needed stuff. They were like, no, we're going to bring it to you. I'm not a person that likes to ask for anything. I didn't have to ask though. They were just bringing it. They were constantly calling. They were sending me encouragement words. They were there for me. Kingdom builders, y'all rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Kingdom builders, y'all rock. Tasha, yes, how do you to respond? Man, overwhelming. I couldn't even imagine that reaching out and being transparent about what I was going through was going to get that type of response and support. And I'm so grateful to my church family. I even had a dear sister come and sit in the yard under the tree in the heat and visit with me while I'm confined to my home. And we talked through the screen and that just really touched my heart because that was one of the things I feared was being by myself mm. and something happening to me and somebody not know. I mean, groceries, cards, calls, people were live chatting with me on the phone. It was just amazing and overwhelming. I just thank God for Kingdom Builders Church International, Dr. LaWanna Grant and Dr. Daryl Grant. So and all the KBCI, it was amazing. I thank you all so much. Oh my goodness. You all, you know, Tasha, and you said it, um, the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. And we have a phenomenal pastor and this is his heart that we would care for the people of God. And so Kingdom Builders, thank y'all. We just happen to believe that we have one of the greatest churches in Charlotte. Praise yes. Jesus. <laughs> And so listen, I even want to take this time to invite you if you're watching next week, we are actually having our parking lot worship service. No, we are not getting out of the cars. Yes, we are wearing our mask. Okay. Right. And so, um, we even have KBCI mask. So you can even visit the website right now and go ahead and put in your order. Um, and order your KBCI paraphernalia, your t-shirt. We're just going to come and have a wonderful, wonderful time. Our cars will be parked according to the standards of social distancing, all right? Um, because we wanna protect everybody. We wanna protect everybody. And if you get out of your car, you're gonna have to stay right at your car and shout <laughs> from your car, all right? <laughs> All right, so we just want to invite you all to a very, very loving church. Listen, Robin, listen, Tasha, you all have encouraged the body of Christ um, this morning. We continue to pray for um, Sister Crystal Walker. She's a part of our church. She's a dear daughter. And we learned uh, this past week that she's been diagnosed with COVID-19. And so, uh, Crystal, I know you didn't know we were going to call you out live in the service, but we love you. Yeah. Pastor, myself, your kingdom yeah. building family, we are praying for you. Um, we thank God for uh, Sister Tawanda's son, who was mm -hmm. on the men from COVID-19. We are praying for your family and we thank God for the recovery of Brother Jerome as well in our church. Amen. Who was diagnosed with COVID-19. And so this thing has hit Kingdom Builders, but we thank God that he has been faithful. Before we go to worship, Robin, Tasha, what would you say to someone who is uh, has just been diagnosed, who was kind of scared? Oh my God, am I going to get it? Get it? Or if they are ministering to someone with COVID nineteen, um, Robin, uh, what what would you say? Um, I would say first continue to pray and pray and pray. Stay prayed up for real. Um, but also follow all guidelines. Do whatever the doctors tell you to do. Um, drink plenty of fluids, all of that, let it get through you. Um, 
and just stay in, but stay prayed up and stay connected to someone. If you can't pray for yourself, stay connected to someone who can pray for you and build your faith until you can get through it. Yeah. And Tasha, as you encourage us, share with us too, because Robin said, do, do what the medical, um, medical field is telling us to do. What are those things um, that we need to know? Because you're in that field. Help us, encourage us. First and foremost, don't panic. Mm. Because one of the things about COVID-19 is it's the virus that causes pneumonia. So if you follow the guidelines with the social distancing, the hand washing, wearing masks when you're out in public. And if you're sick, staying home so we don't have community spread. Those things are what prevents the healthcare system from being overwhelmed. Because whenever we have an influx of um, patients coming in, then the staff is constantly being um, exposed to the virus and people. And so it just creates more issues when you aren't following the guidelines of social distancing and wearing masks and staying home when you're sick. But the good news is if you continue to, if you're coughing, cough, try, if you're having mucus production, spit it, cough it up. Don't let it just settle into your chest because that's what would create or cause the pneumonia. Mm. When you begin to get pneumonia into your lungs is when you start having difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, um, chest pain. And those are the things that you will need to seek medical attention for. Just know that you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be inconvenienced, but it's worth it. If you can just allow your body that time to rest, and fight off the virus with your immune system because right now we don't have a cure. Right now there isn't a medication for COVID-19 that we can readily take to relieve ourselves of this virus. But there are things that you can do to boost your immune system, your immune system and allowing your body to rest and doing everything you can to prevent your body from having the mucus build up or develop pneumonia. Wow. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. God is good. Yes, he is. Um, I'm in the sanctuary this morning, and I know you all hear the music behind me, and you see the worship team. Oh, my gosh. Y'all see Jerome. Um, God has healed him. Listen, we're getting ready to go into worship, so why don't you stand in your living rooms wherever you are. Let's go to worship. God bless you, and we will see you in the sanctuary. See y'all. We get ourselves out of the way. We put on the power of the 
morning, Kingdom Builders. I am so excited to introduce to you today our musical guests. Today we have with us Crystal and Anderson. She serves as a praise and worship member at her church, the Worship Center in Little Rock, Arkansas, under the leadership of Pastor Lloyd Allen III and First Lady Carla Allen. She also serves as a Youth Advisory Board member in the Louisiana East jurisdiction under the leadership of Bishop Alfonso Denson. Kingdom Builders, let's welcome Crystalline Anderson. God bless you, Kingdom Builders Church International, and to Pastor uh, Grant and Lady Grant. I am so honored and elated to be with you on this morning, and I also want to give thanks to God and personal thanks to Lady Grant for giving me this opportunity. One man sat alone on the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his rags and he shivered in the shadows but then Jesus came and he made that man's darkness flee decided to worship with us this morning and we believe that there is a word for you thank you crystalline anderson for sharing 
your anointed music ministry with us this morning, preparing our hearts and our minds to receive the word of the Lord. The atmosphere is rich and it is ready for us to receive the word of the Lord this morning. Won't you turn with me this morning to Psalm 27? Psalm 27, and we're going to be discussing the entire chapter. It's only about 14 verses, but we're going to read the 13th verse. Psalm 27 and 13. You'll find these words. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Most Bible scholars uh, would agree that it is difficult to identify the timing of this particular psalm that David wrote. However, it is clear that it is during one of the times when he was fleeing from the attacks of Saul, where he was fleeing from tax, from Saul's attempts to take his life. It is a couple of things that I wanna bring out in this text as we talk about trying to negotiate seasons that we are unclear about their ending. David was being pursued by his enemies, as you will see in verse 3. Additionally, he was disconnected from the house of the Lord. You'll see that in verse 4. He was separated from his parents. You'll see that in verse 10. And he was being talked about in verse 12. Many of us can identify with at least one of these four categories that David was dealing with. He was being pursued by his enemy Saul or those whom he had commissioned to attempt to attack him and to take his life. During this season of pandemic, we are all clear that COVID-19 is an enemy. And because of this enemy's presence, we've had to deal with some other factors that perhaps have not been kind to us. Because of quarantining, many of us have been laid off or furloughed from our jobs. And as a result of that, we've had to deal with another enemy. Perhaps that enemy is economic stress brought on by debt. Many of us are dealing uh, with feelings of insecurity because those things that we found comfort in, we've not been able to make those things available to us during this time. We've not been able to take advantage of many of those comforts. And so we are dealing with mental and emotional, perhaps, even financial enemies that have been pursuing us and attacking us during this period. Also, David said that he had been separated from the house of the Lord, that he was not able to worship as he normally was because of the attempts upon his life by Saul. He had to many times uh, isolate himself to, pretend, to protect his identity and to protect his whereabouts. And so he had to live in isolation so that Saul could not find him. And he said that one thing that he desired of the Lord, and that was to dwell in his house. He could not get to the house of the Lord because of social distancing and quarantining. We can't worship like we normally do. We can't go to in-person worship services. We are longing to be in God's house. We're longing to be in the presence of God's people. We're longing to experience the fellowship of corporate worship. We desire the fellowship of the saints, but we have been separated 
from the house of the Lord in this season. This is why we're coming to you now through a virtual worship experience. Uh, he went on to say that he was separated from his family. Many times we are cut off from our parents and, be, and from our family members and from our friends and our loved ones because of this social distancing, because of the quarantining and the isolation, those family relationships that we are used to enjoying, we have been separated from them. We have been reduced perhaps to just a telephone call. We have been reduced perhaps to just a Zoom call or perhaps FaceTiming one another. It's not the same as being able to be in one another's company, being able to hug and to share that uh, touch that we would normally experience. We're having to adjust to a new normal. And then lastly, he said that he was being talked about or slandered you know, it's hard to believe that even in a difficult time where everyone should be seeking the Lord, that you still have some folks that have not gotten the message that this is a time when God is trying to get our attention and they're still doing foolish things and silly things and immature things, perhaps gossiping and spreading rumors and talking about people and using their mouths for other purposes besides blessing the Lord. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine that we're not before uh, the Lord on our faces using our mouths in such a way where we're only giving glory to God, hopeful that we will see his hand manifested on our behalf. And so David was dealing with at least four of these challenges during this season of fleeing, during this season of isolation. And this brings us to our text where he says, I almost lost heart or I almost gave up. Uh, some translations say that I almost fainted. The breath within me almost gave out unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, David is saying, I, I, I almost got to the place where my breath gave out, but then something clicked inside of me. And I started believing again. I, I, I almost uh, gave up my last breath, but then there, became, there came a shift in my thinking. There came a shift in how I was uh, uh, feeling. And I started believing that there was going to be an end to this season, that I was going to see his goodness. I'm dealing with some stuff right now that I would not categorize as good, but I'm believing that in the next season to come that I'm going to experience the goodness of the Lord. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 3 and the first verse, he says this, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. We have to believe that God is still in control of the seasons, that God is still in control of the times. As we are standing here today on this July the 26th, is that we have two frustrations that we are trying to balance. The first frustration is this, not knowing when this season is going to come to an end. And then the next frustration is not knowing what the new season is going to look like. We're here, we're confident that there is going to be an end, but we don't know when the end is going to come. And we're confident that a new season is going to come, 
But what we don't know is what the new season is going to look like. And it is very reasonable to consider that this can be overwhelming for us. It is reasonable to consider that we will go through emotional highs and emotional lows as we're walking through these months and through this season of uncertainty. It is reasonable that there are times when we are questioning what God is doing. There are times when we are questioning how God is going to get us through it. If we're honest with ourselves, uh, uh, back in March, we did not know how we were going to make it. And for some of us, we weren't even sure if we were going to make it. But to the glory and to the honor of God, we are four and a half months into this and you are still here by the grace of God. I, I want to read a passage from 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and I'm going to begin at the third verse. You'll find these words. For though we walk or we live in this flesh, we do not war, we do not battle, we do not combat the attacks or the attempts to destroy us that come upon us in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly, they're not physical, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of every stronghold, everything that is trying to bind us or imprison us or chain us or keep us locked in a place of depression and oppression or keep us locked and chained in a position where we feel hopeless and helpless or keep us locked and chained in a place where we feel like this will never come to an end. But look at what verse five says. They are help us to cast down every argument and every high thing that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into the obedience of Christ. Yes, many times we are in a mental and an emotional battle. But the word of God in 2 Corinthians 10 says this, that our weapons are not carnal, they're not fleshly, but they are mighty. And they pull down strongholds. Listen, casting down imaginations and every high thing that would seek to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. What do we know about God? We know that our God said that he would never leave us and that he would never forsake us, that he would be with us even until the end of this age. And, and let's make it specific to where we are. He will be with us to the end of this season. Not only will he be with us to the end of this season, but he is going to usher us into the very next season. There are three essentials that we must make sure that we have in our lives. Three necessities, and they may seem like, uh, 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 oh, I know that already. Uh, uh, that's, that's common knowledge, but we've got to apply these necessary ingredients to our life because daily it's a battle. Daily it's a struggle. Daily the enemy will attack you. Daily the enemy will try to keep your mind in confusion and cause you to think something other than the word of God. Romans 12 and one says this, I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy 
acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now consider verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I've got to, you've got to, we all have got to renew our minds daily. We will lose heart if we don't renew our minds. We will be in a place or a state of confusion if we do not renew our minds. We will be in a place of anxiety and doubt and worry if we're not renewing our minds. We will be like David. We will get to places and times where we uh, 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 feel like we are losing heart, where we feel like life it is leaving us because of the challenges of this season that are coming upon us. But as we renew our mind, as we take the word of God and we read the word of God and renew our minds, we begin to cast down every argument or every imagination and every high thing that is trying to exalt itself above what we know about God. We live in the reality of a pandemic, but I've got to renew my mind with the reality and the power of God's word. We live in the reality of facing challenges in this season, but I never allow myself to be conformed to what the world is saying, to what the news media is saying, I've got to renew my mind with the word of God. I've got to make sure that I have a constant diet of God's word coming into my spirit and into my soul, which is my mind and which is my heart, which is constantly renewing it so that I'm overriding the information that is in the natural with the word of God, which is supernatural. The next thing that I must do, I've got to make sure that as I'm trying to stay connected with my family, with my friends, I may be in a place of quarantine and we cannot be in each other's presence and I am diligent about making phone calls and having emails and texts and whatever mode of communication that you, that you use to stay in contact with your family, we've got to make sure that we're in contact with God. How do we stay in contact with God? We've got to have conversations with him. A conversation with God is simply prayer. Prayer is how we talk to God. Prayer many times is how God talks back to us. And the word of God says in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the sixth and the seventh verse, and it speaks directly to the anxiety that we may experience from time to time. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And listen to this. This is so powerful. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A conversation with God will bring peace into your soul. A conversation with God will help to settle our anxieties. A conversation with God that's based upon his word. As we begin to talk to God, we begin to declare his word right back to him. As we have read the word of God and our minds are renewed, as we begin to go into prayer, we don't go into prayer talking about our problems but we go into prayer 
talking about his promises. There's no need for me to articulate the problem. God already knows the problem. But what I do is that I begin to talk to him about his promises. And as I declare his promises, then heaven begins to impart peace into me. Then heaven begins to give me the kinds of peace that the word says is beyond understanding. People don't even understand why you are remaining as calm and as confident as you are. It's because you have the peace of God. You would lose heart. You would faint. You would feel like giving up. You would feel at times like I'm taking my last breath because I am so unsure and uncertain about the future, I don't see any reason to go any further. But I believe, what do you believe? I believe God and I believe his word. And because I believe, I will see the goodness of the Lord while I am yet alive. And then lastly, the necessary essentials that we need to have in this season is that I need to have faith and trust in God. Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My faith is strengthened my faith is fortified because i read god's word my faith is strengthened and my faith is fortified because when i pray i don't talk about problems i talk about the promises my faith is strengthened and my faith is empowered because i believe that everything that God said about my life has got to come to pass, even though I'm walking through a season that is uncomfortable, that I don't like, that I'm uncertain about, but I am using the necessary tools that God has given me. Now, the last verse in this chapter there are only 14 verses. I, I used verse 13 as our text, and we highlighted some points within this chapter in the very beginning, but it ends on verse 14 saying this, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. There is a lesson in this one verse because many times we feel that at the close of our prayer there should be an immediate response from God. If we're honest with ourselves there were many of us that after the pandemic was declared that we began to decree Psalm 91 and we thought that before the week was over, COVID-19 was going to just vanish. We, we thought that, that once we declared uh, uh, Psalm 91, uh, uh, and, I, and I encourage you to go and read it, that, that, that this was not going to have the devastating effect that it did have. That, that, that we thought that somehow uh, this would be completely eliminated. But here we are four and a half months later and COVID seems to be as present, if not more present, than it was when it first began. But David the psalmist wrote this, wait on the Lord. Some things don't happen immediately, wait on the Lord. Some things won't take place at the conclusion of our prayer, wait on the Lord. We learn how to trust God when we walk through seasons where our prayers are not immediately answered. We can do all of the things 
that are necessary, meaning fasting and praying. But God is not our jack in the box. We cannot just turn the knob and he jumps up when we get to a certain place in the melody that's being played. But no, he's got a timing. He's got a timing. He's got a timing. He's got a timing for this season. And as we read in Ecclesiastes, uh, a time for every purpose. I don't know what it is, and I know there are many people that are attempting to identify that they know the purpose for which this has come. But there's one thing that is for sure. God has a purpose for it. And whether we're clear about it or whether we're unclear about it, the timing for the purpose is for a season. And when he has fulfilled the purpose, hallelujah, glory be to God. When he has fulfilled the purpose for why he has allowed COVID-19, then we are going to see a shifting. We're going to see a transition. We're going to see a transformation. And we're going to step into a new season of God. The problem is, is that we can't track this season like we do the seasons of the calendar. You know, when, whenever we are experiencing winter, we don't get too overwhelmed because we know spring is coming three months later. As we're walking through spring and we're dealing perhaps with all of the rain and perhaps all of the allergic reactions we have to the blossoms that are taking place, uh, we don't get too overwhelmed because we know summer is coming. As we're walking through summer and maybe the heat can be scorching and unbearable and we're looking for milder temperatures, we don't get overwhelmed because we know fall is coming. The same thing with fall as it relates to winter. We know there's a timing to it. But with this pandemic, there is no beginning and ending on our calendar. So what do we have to do? We've got to trust God. We've got to place our confidence in God. And I am encouraging someone this morning that you may feel as though you're losing heart. You may feel overwhelmed by what you're facing. You may feel as though this enemy, COVID-19, or uh, the residual effects of it are attempting to attack you and take you out. You may feel uh, uh, the grief of separation and the overwhelming desire to want to be in the house of the Lord again. That may be your one desire to get back into the house of the Lord. David says that when my father and my mother forsake me, he's feeling the grief of the separation of those familiar relationships. Or maybe you're just dealing with some crazy folk that's running their mouth that just they just need to shut up and get on their knees and pray. And, and, and you're dealing with the slander or you're dealing with the rumor or you're dealing uh, with people that call themselves saints, but they're really spiritually immature and don't know how to direct their conversation towards God. You may be dealing with one or all of these factors. But remember, verse 13, David said, that I am going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I prophesy to you today that you will see God's goodness. You will see God's goodness in this season. You will see God's goodness in the next season. I, I know we don't know when it's going to come to an end, but you're going to continue to see his goodness through the sea. You didn't think you were going to make it. You didn't know how you were going to make it, but you're making it. And not only that, well, what is the new season going to look like? I don't know. But his goodness is going to take you through this. His goodness is going to lead you to that. And when you get over there, his goodness is going to take you through to the next season of your life. Be encouraged this morning. 
God has not forsaken you. I believe it was on Monday of this week during our early morning prayer time, and I felt inspired by the Lord to say that we were entering a season of divine reversals. You don't need God to change the season in order for him to reverse things in your favor. That you can still be walking through a pandemic and God bless you. You can still be walking through a pandemic and God gives you peace that the Bible says surpasses all understanding or, or to put it this way, that doesn't make any sense. You can still be walking through a season of uncertainty and experience the blessing and the favor of God in extreme measures. And I declare to you today, just like I did on our early morning prayer this past Monday, that you will experience divine reversals, that you will experience supernatural interruptions, that God is going to show up on your behalf and cause you to see his favor in ways that are going to blow your mind. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my brothers and for my sisters. I pray for every household that is present during this virtual worship service. I, I, I pray for the members of Kingdom Builders. I pray for all of our guests and for all of our visitors. I declare like your word says that we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And God, I pray that even in these next several days, that your people will experience divine reversals and that they will see the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for worship. We pray that you've been inspired and transformed by the Word of God. Our mission at Kingdom Builders is gather, grow, give, and go. We gather for worship, grow by reading God's Word, give our tithe and offering, and go make disciples for Jesus Christ. There are three opportunities to give and you're invited to worship with us at this time. Feel free to use your mobile device to access Givelify. Simply locate Kingdom Builders Church International in Charlotte, North Carolina. When you see our logo, be confident that you have the right church. Or visit our website at www.kbcinc.org. There you'll have an opportunity to give via PayPal with a credit or bank card. 
Or if you'd like to mail your donation, please send it to P.O. Box 481048, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28269. Thank you for your generous donation. As you have sown in this season, it is our prayer that you experience an uninterrupted harvest in the next season. If you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, we invite you to worship with us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Bible study and Sunday at 10 a.m. for worship. Join us for corporate prayer Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon, and Saturdays at 9 a.m. Be sure to visit our website for special events and ministry opportunities. On behalf of Pastor Darrell and First Lady Luana and your Kingdom Builders family, continue to walk in the favor of the Lord and have a Kingdom Day.